I'm okay, thank you very much for asking. This is a video about how to make this jumper. It is a corner to corner jumper, uh, corner to corner or C to C, one of my favourite crochet stitches. It's obvious it works corner to corner, it says it all really, you work in one corner, you work diagonally in rows to another corner, job done. To make it more interesting you can change colours as you go, as you're working up and down you can swap your yarns over to create pixelated images. This for me was supposed to be like a, a festive jumper, it's my Christmas sweater. I th and, I, and I think it works. It's kind of a subtle Christmassy vibe going on rather than full in your face um, proper like Christmassy Christmassy novelty jumpers. I think actually you could probably wear it for a bit longer than just the festive season so you know I like it. Also you could use this video and the blog post that I'm going to write at some point. You could use it as a foundation to create any kind of pixel image on it, you know, the world is your oyster. You could do whatever you wanted on it, um, <laughs> anything. I used stitchfiddle.com um, to draw this out and then what you can do is download your, your chart thus and then use it to, um, to work from as you crochet, it's perfect. I've, I've known about them for a long time now and um, you can get a free version. I've, I usually, I, I pay for an annual subscription now because you just get a few extra perks with it. And Not that this is an advert for Stitch Fiddle, it's not, but um, yeah, it's just really easy to create charts. So you can follow on my blog, this chart will be available to um, download and then you can print it and work from it for the motifs. So what else do you need to know? Before I kick off, um, I've got, I filmed lots of tutorials for lots of different things. So filmed a tutorial for the C to C, filmed a tutorial for the join as you go rib, filmed a tutorial for the, um, the cuffs and the waistband, then all the construction of it as well. I don't think I filmed anything else, but all told, there's lots of different bits of footage I've got, got to smush together this afternoon and probably for the rest of the week. I used Paintbox Wool Mix Aran, which is a favourite of mine. It's a 50-50 blend of wool and acrylic, so you've got warmth from the wool and sturdy strength from the acrylic. Plus you can wash it um, without doing too much to it. It's 100 grams, which is 180 meters or 196 yards. Um, it's a, a size four, it says medium, but I always forget to, to look at that little logo symbol thingamajig. The hook recommended for it is a four and a half millimeter, but I think that would create too much of a gappy, gappy look and make it too big. So, um, to kind of make the fabric tighter, 3.75 is what you need. This is my favourite hook. My favourite hook size. It's very, very versatile. Because I've got a slightly loose tension, if you were a tight crocheter, you could probably use a four millimetre and get a similar kind of gauge. Talking of gauge, I'll put that information in the blog post because I can't remember off the top of my head what the gauge is, but I measured it out, worked out enough blocks that would hopefully fit me. And it's come, I would say it's come up about right, I can wear it, it's fine, but maybe it's a 12 to 14 rather than a 10 to 12, which is what I was aiming for. Um, that's UK terms for the sizing. I think you go down for a US size. So if this is a 12 to 14, I think that's a 10 to 12 in US speak, but don't quote me on it. Can you believe that I weighed this this morning? 985 grams. That's a lot of yarn, a lot of yarn. I'm, I don't know why it's eaten so much. It might be the sleeves, um, 
it's not particularly long I just think it just does use up quite a lot so I bought 10 balls of the main colour which is vanilla cream I think and then I've got these colours, these are my contrast colours. Um, I think I had, I think I've had them in stash already. So I put, I think I bought this one and this one. But I had these ones already. So mustard, sailor blue, possibly, possibly grass green, raspberry and bubblegum pink, I think. And then literally, I mean, you're just using a smattering of colours, aren't you? It's just a few yards, a few metres, really. Um, hardly any at all. But the motif goes all the way across the front and nowhere else. I'm just trying to think. Information is shared throughout the video, so I'm not going to do it all in one fell swoop right at the beginning. I'll try and share the information as and when it's useful. Um, I think I'm going to pass you over now to my past self from yesterday before all of this was sewn together. I can't remember what I said yesterday. So I hope I don't miss anything out and I hope I don't say anything twice. And if I do, I'm sorry. Um, but I'm going to try and write a really kind of succinct blog post to go with it without too much kind of filler. It's just going to be sticking to the facts so that you can actually see the information you need rather than any kind of extra fluff. You don't need fluff. We've got enough fluff in our lives. Um, but basically, do do a gauge swatch. I will I will put the information in the blog post. Then you need to make the pieces. Mostly just the main pieces, the rectangles, it's dead straightforward, no shaping really. Um, then you sew it all together. I will show you how. Um, and then you ease in the cuffs and the waistband, which is probably the fiddliest bit, but it's not hard. And then if you wanted to, you could block it. And I haven't blocked it yet, which is why I'm calling it a 12 to 14, not a 10 to 12, because once this is relaxed a bit, it's going to be a, probably another size up. So 14, not 12. That's what I think. It's very, very naughty of me not to block a jumper. It's really probably quite important with jumpers, especially if it's not a massively loose fit. I feel like I need to add that because I know some people get really cross about gauge and like breaking rules and stuff. It is one of those things which probably you should follow more often than not. Just so you know, it comes to my hips. And it is a nice relaxed fit. It's got lots of positive ease going on. Um, whereas on the sleeves, I've gone for a balloon sleeve and a nice long um, fitted cuff, which I've been, oh, I've been meaning to do for such a long time. So yes, I hope you like it. And I wonder if you'll come up with lots of different images on yours or if you'll stick to this one. Who knows? Um, you can do whatever you like, can't you? Right. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of the video. This is the chart for the motifs on the front of the jumper. I mentioned already, or I will do in a minute, that I actually worked it upside down. And literally the only reason I did that was to get the colour work out of the way at the very beginning it was the first piece I worked up and I just felt like that's the way I wanted to do it um I mean if it if it made you feel more comfortable yeah sure you could work it so that it's the right way up but it makes absolutely no difference um it really doesn't so you could work it this way and finish in the corner but you'd You'd still arguably have to cut your yarn and rejoin it here because I add a foundation row of single crochet stitches onto the right side. So you would work this way anyway. So regardless of whether or not you start 
upside down, right way round. As soon as you finish it in either this corner or this corner, you're still cutting your yarn to work the foundation the right way round. I really hope that's not gobbledygook. Um, but my chart I printed off and worked from was a lot smaller. And as you can see, actually, the original was a bit longer and I determined that it didn't need to be. So I chopped off those top rows. Um, and you can see that actually my jumper is a perfect fit. So I didn't need, didn't need those. And yeah, as I work, I, <laughs> depending on what's easier for me to see at the time, I'll, I'll draw a line or dots, little circles, whatever. And then, yeah, I like to draw the arrows so I know which direction I'm working in. It just helps. And then, well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. But what I'm going to do now is work up a much smaller swatch so you can see what I did and how I did it. This is just a Diddy version. I don't think we need to go into anything massive for you to get a good idea of the C to C uh, pattern and the colour work. So um, it's only nine blocks across and seven blocks high. You know, I think that's enough for you to see what's going on. I always start in the bottom right hand corner and then um, work to the opposite corner on the other side. So I've got a 3.75 millimeter hook and an Aran weight yarn. Slip knot. Okay, chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you skip the first three stitches and do three trebles, that's US doubles in the next three chains. You can actually slow down a YouTube video, so if you need to, you can do that. Um, that's the first block, that's this one. I need to find a pencil. Ha ha ha. So, um, that's this one. Done. Um, to begin row two, you chain six and then again miss the first three stitches and do as you did before by working three stitches into the next three chains. And that is one block made and it looks really weird at this stage. What you do is just flip that one over because you're always working in the three chain space of the block below. And join with a slip stitch. So that's one block of row two. I think I'm working this direction. I think. I don't know if it matters too much. Provided all your kind of floats and things remain on one side, doesn't really matter. So hopefully you've just spotted there. I've done chain three here and then worked three stitches into the chain space there. So you repeat, always when you're increasing, you're chaining six at the beginning. That is standard corner to cornering. Turn it, slip stitch it, chain three, whoops, don't drop the stitch. Chain three, one, two, three. Now 
and then building each row with an, um, an additional block. One, two, three. So, uh, yeah, boop, boop, boop. And then we're looking at a color change here. I'm an awkward color changer, I think, because for C to C, I don't change color halfway through the last stitch because to me, it doesn't create a crisp square of the blocks. Um, you could if you wanted to, but then the the yarn that you carry kind of drags across the block and looks messy. So I finish off that treble and just draw through to chain six on this bit. Um, and then if you pull tight enough, you can't see it. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then carry the yarn over the top of the block rather than across it. Then you can't see it. Whereas if I changed halfway down the stitch, it would kind of sit like that. And I don't like it. So, one, two, three. And then there's no colour changes on the rest of this row. I ha yeah, I'm. hopefully that's clear. I'm just finishing off row five here. And it's usually at this point that I go, oh yeah, I didn't cut off the yarn that I don't need anymore. So I'll do that. Um... Because I don't, yeah, we don't need, this is just a one single block colour, so that can disappear and then we'll worry about those ends when we've finished. Um, and the next row, for row, for on this chart for row six, we've got some more colour work. So start as normal, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then where are we? So I've just done this row. So this is row six. So we've got one and two blocks to work in the main color. One. To, you'll notice that I, I kind of work the first block before turning. Um, whatever makes you feel comfortable will do. The next colour is blue and I do have some blue. So... I put the hook into the chain space and then I pull through um, on the slip stitch to join. That's when I pull through my yarn. And chain three. And then you can crochet over the end just for the three stitches. So you'll notice this is a little bit loose, but all you need to do is just pull on the yarn to bring it back in place. And then um, there's two more stitches in this blue, two more blocks in this blue.
So this is now this is now the right side, this is the wrong side, so we can have floats aplenty on this side. Um, here you go. Just make sure you don't pull it too tight because otherwise you'll produce loads of kinks in the work and you don't want that. So pull through the yarn, making sure that this isn't too tight. Obviously not too loose as well. If you just sort of have a bit of a practice, you'll work out a nice tension that suits you. And that is row six done. So we can cross. Um, see, as you can see, the arrows do help. We're now here. So onto row seven, and lo and behold, it's easy peasy because there's no colour changes in this row. But we are going to do a little corner. What I'm going to do is just crochet up to here, and I won't do it in video time because um, you don't want to just sit here and watch the same thing. We're in the corner now, so we're not going to chain six because we don't want to increase anymore. So turn the work for the start of row eight and to get to where you want to be for row eight you just slip stitch across the top of each stitch and into the chain space and that's a corner made and this is where you start the next row so chain three to make the block that's going to fill this space. And then join with a slip stitch. So there you go. That's how you corner off a corner to corner. So we've just made this block here. Next block and then it's back to the blue. So hook the blue yarn and draw it through, just ease the tension a little bit on it so that it's not pulling too tightly. And then, then you can work the next block in blue. I was just crocheting over that end, but actually it's making it tight again, so I'm going to avoid that. And I've made a mistake, and I'm just going to, rather than edit it out, I'm going to I'm going to leave it here. Um, I quite often do this, so it's a good lesson to learn. I've left my my main colour on the right side, so when I go to change it at whatever point it's going to be floating across the right side. So um, what I should have done, and literally I forget this nine times out of ten, well, not that often. Leave the working yarn to the back of the work and that way the floats all stay on the same side. It's very simple and should be very easy to remember. Ease that tension. Bloop. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm making it look harder than it is. It's honestly super duper easy, I promise. I'm not crocheting over this float because I'll just make it even tighter. New colour alert. Don't need him again. 
snip now. Back to the blue. We still want the blue for another row, so don't snip the blue yet, but change back to the main colour. Get out of the way. That's the only problem with C2C colour work, is that sometimes when you're working with multiple colours, those ends kind of, they like to join the party when they're not welcome. Just move them out of the way on a regular basis. Although we squared off wherever it was here for this row, we're not ready to do that here. So that's basically how you create a rectangle. You carry on increasing on this side, but you're not doing it on this side. So that's the rectangling of it. This is the um, first block of row nine. So it's this one here. So this will be this will be the end. This will be this bit. And a, this is another nice, easy breezy, no color change row. Just working the last block of row nine here. Join with a slip stitch to this block, turn, and then again slip stitching across the top of the block into the chain space. Chain three, four, row ten. Hello Blue, where are you? Oh. Snip that yarn, don't need it anymore. Bring in the main colour again. Where are we? So we're here. Ooh. So next corner now, once I've done a couple more blocks and here we are, we're at the end. So this is the last block I'm going to work now. One, two, three, three stitches. One, two, three. So chain, not chain, slip stitch into that block, turn. Um, I like to lift, lift the working yarn out of the way a little bit so I can see where I'm going to slip stitch across the top of the, the block I just made, which is creating the next corner of the work, see? See? What way should I go? This way. So there's all my lovely floats and ends. Um, whilst we're here, um, what you can do with the single ones, I find, is a nice little knot so that they ain't going anywhere. But be confident that everything is correct before you do that because if you end up frogging, those knots will be um, inconvenient to say the least. 
So we've just done row 10. So row 11 is another nice, nice, easy peasy row. Right, I've just finished row 11. So again, I'm slip stitching across the top. And there's um, a colour change at the end of row 12. So um, I'll just do a few blocks. Leaping ahead a little bit on row 12, I've just worked um, the first, just worked the first three blocks there. And now it's um, for the last block, it is a colour change. So again, working the other working yarn to the back and then slip stitch that through. One, two, three. And I'm showing you this one because it's on the outside of the work. So before you snip off, you want to slip stitch in the same colour. Whoops. And then in the, oh, if you don't split the yarn, in the last one, slip stitch through the main colour. Then you can get rid, boom, get out. Okay, and then it's just a question of getting to the end. Getting to the, oh, I'm gonna run out of yarn on, <laughs> on my main colour. No, uh, I have lost a yarn chicken, haven't I? Oh, bother and blast. Ugh, hang on. Look, all I've got left after making a mammoth jumper are just little balls like that. So, one, two, three. The bin men are here, I hope you can't hear them. Doing a great job, but um, they're noisy. I'm trying to film a tutorial here, guys. Where are we? Not long to go, not long to go, keep watching. This is the exciting bit. When you get to this bit of a, a C to C, you're just at, you're at the very end and you can fasten off and oh, the satisfaction, especially when you're making a big old bit of C to C and when you're in the middle of it, the rows take forever. But relatively, it's actually a really nice and quick stitch, isn't it? Last block, last block, woohoo. Chain three, one, two, three. And then join with a slip stitch. And, ugh, ugly wrong side. Oh, that's my heinous color change. Um, so there you have it. And look, what a stupid place to land. Um, I'm going to cut it. Oh man, so annoying when I, especially when I had to like win that yarn chicken. I didn't, lost. God. Fasten that off awkwardly. Boop. Right, let's try and prettify things. Any strands you do have on the right side, pull them through. I don't know why you would do that. Not like me. Ugh. There's a little one here. Mm, yeah, go on. Let's just pull it through there. Tie you in a knot. I'm not going to bore you by sewing in the ends on camera. You know how to sew in an end, right? Um, yeah. 
just if you fancy it, tie each end in a knot if you've got two strands to do so. Done that one already. Let's do this one. Do make sure you sew them in as well though. So let's pretend that they're all beautifully sewn in. So yeah, um, up to you whichever way you did work. Let's say I did as I did. I'm doing as I did, which is actually turn it over because I worked it upside down, didn't I? So I like to, when I join a new piece of yarn, I do like to slip knot it on. So in the top corner, this can go in out, right in the top corner, join your yarn. Let's go in here. And we're going to work the foundation of double crochet. So that's one, no, sorry, single crochets in American speak, double crochets in UK terms. So where you have a vertical block here, you do uh, a single crochet in each, one, two, three vertical stitches. I don't know if you can see them. They're actually the wrong side facing right now. Um, one, two, three, and then in these horizontal blocks where you have the bars of the trebles laying horizontally, work two um, single crochet stitches. And then the next one is the vertical three, so it's three. And then two. three to the end, okay? And then this creates the foundation that we're gonna work the neck ribbing into. And I am going to create more ends because I'm gonna cut the yarn here and rejoin back at the beginning so it's all right side facing and therefore more aesthetically pleasing. So sorry to do that to you. Um, Fine, cheat if you want, but no, 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 no. I don't like it. Um, you could work, you could start your ribbing here, but it's not going to be as tidy. So, for the sake of a couple of extra ends, I am willing to go the extra mile on this one. So again, a little slip knot. And in the very first stitch, join and do slip stitch it on rather than um, double crochet it on or single crochet it on, sorry. <gasps> Mixing my terms up. Right, so chain however many uh, you want to do for your, uh, your rib. I'm going to do that many. Um, it's not enough for a jumper, but it's enough for a swatch. And then skip the first chain and work a half double into the next for uh, prettiness work into the back bump rather than a loop we're doing a half double if you're in the US or a half treble if you're in the UK into the back bumps of that chain One at the base. Okie pokey. So, not in that one, but in the next three stitches of our foundation row, go and slip stitch one, two, three, and turn. Now we're going to work up and it's in the front third loop of each of those stitches. You miss the first three slip stitches, 
and then work your half half stitches into the front third loop. Um, you may get a better uh, a better idea of what this looks like for the ribbing sections. I've done a separate bit of the tutorial later on for the ribbing of the the waistband and the sleeves. Chain one and turn. And again, half trebling or half doubling, whichever you call it, into the front third loop. That's what I call it anyway. I don't know if it has an official name. Last one. Every time I've done this, there's always like one, two, three strands. I don't know if you can see them. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. <sighs> don't bang it in the top one, but either the middle one or the bottom one I have found is absolutely fine and makes very little difference which one it is. So slip stitch in here, here and here. And then that's what you're doing all the way along. And that's a join as you go rib. Turn, miss the three slip stitches. Front third loop. Boop. Boop. Okey pokey. Chain one and turn. And you do it all the way along. Um, you might end, finish up here or finish down there. I don't think it matters too much. I'm not a stickler for, oh my God, it needs to be multiples of three. You land where you land at the other end, it's fine. Um, it all depends on the sizing and I can't remember how many stitches I did across there. And I never actually counted on the jumper. I wasn't precious about it and I don't think you need to be either. Honestly, don't worry, it's fine. Um, so just do that all the way along and land where you land fasten off and leave a tail that's long enough to do the shoulder seams and that is that is that if you're doing um the the plain one so the back panel you know where i've cut here and then rejoined here so that it's all right side facing um you can do the foundation row and then turn and don't snip because you're not trying to preserve all prettiness on one side because it's there's no patterning. Does that make sense? I think so. Um, so you don't need to fanny about with the rigmarole of um, joining it all on one side. You can just turn after you've done the, the, the single crochet row. Gosh, this has been the most complicated tutorial I've ever done like overall all of the elements put together I've been nuts um, but that's this bit done I hope it has been clear and helpful if not then this is not my vocation hello from the past I have not yet finished all my pieces of my jumper I'm working on the cuffs at the minute but most other pieces are done, so I thought I would show them to you unconstructed so that you can see what they look like. Um, so I've got to probably do at least this much again on the cuff. Um, I'm not going to do loose cuffs like on this jumper. Hopefully they'll be more fitted around my wrist. Uh, so fewer rows you know not so many I would say I'm just under halfway they'll look a bit like that hopefully when they're finished I will work this to about there sew the edges together which I will hopefully show you how to do and then there'll be my the cuffs on my sleeves so I've not finished those I've not finished my waistband either, which is the same technique as the cuffs, just fewer stitches. More rows, but fewer stitches. Um, what I will do is fold it in half, stitch along here, so 
so that I have my waistband for the bottom of the jumper, which I will ease in and then sew on. But for the main pieces I have two sleeves. This is what my sleeves look like. I will fold them so that they are like that and sew down there. I'll do it on the wrong side so that when I turn it right way round the seam's nice and tidy. And um, they are 23 blocks by 28. Phone's ringing, I'm just going to talk through it. It's not even my phone. So two sleeves like that. Yeah, 20, the 23, 23 long, which when you put the cuff on, I'm hoping will be around 48 centimeters in length, uh, which is a decent length for my sleeves. That is, about 19 inches. You can add on more if you want or take it away. I'll let you know when I've made it how much it actually measures because at the moment it's kind of guesswork as it's all in pieces. But that's the kind of measurement I was going for. Um, yeah, no shaping at all. It's just a rectangle folded in half. And so I've got two of those. And then here is the back. Um, it's, one side is a bit neater on the other with regards to finish. See, this will be my wrong side because I think it's slightly uglier, slightly messier than, than this side um, because this ribbing has been attached as I've worked it which I will show you in a little swatch sample I make. I'll probably make it later on this afternoon, but it should hopefully be seamless when all smushed together. And then the good bit, which is the front. So it will be like that. A bit of a boat net going on with this lovely colour work. Let me get my tape measure out again, because I'm not 100% sure how much it measures across. It's about 53 centimetres, which is 21 inches. So perfect for me, be roomy without being too fitted for my size, which is a UK, I'm going to say UK 12 at the moment. Sometimes I'm a 10, but not right now. So this is a really, my, my, my one for this jumper, really scribbled out. So I did 35 blocks across the width and it's 29 for my depth because um, I did fewer for the depth because of the, the ribbing and the waistband will add length to the jumper. Let's talk sizing briefly. If you wanted to size down, you're going to eat into this motif a little bit. You could arguably lose one column here and therefore, see look, there's supposed to be a colour block here and I've left it out because I forgot. Um, you would drop that column and then finish here on both sides so you would lose, so can, let me see my tatty joins. Um, you would lose these two colour blocks and finish right on the edge of the motif section. So two columns, you're looking at that being the equivalent of an inch. So let's say this is a size UK 12 approximately, then you would drop down an inch and it would be a true 10 or something. It's difficult though because I think there's probably about two inches between each size, five centimetres approximately. So sizing down, down really is much smaller and you're going to struggle to keep the same motif. It's fairly 
easy to make most adjustments because it is blocky and I think that helps visualise the difference between the sizes and where you might put your pattern. I don't know but for this it's it's something to play around with a little bit. I will know more when my jumper is finished whether or not this would be like an oversized for a size smaller and maybe a bit more fitted if you wanted to go an extra size up. So what I'm going to do is I'll join the back and the front of the shoulders. I'll work it inside out and I'll probably whip stitch across like 10 centimetres, 12 centimetres, depending on what I fancy. And then just leave a space for my head in the middle and hopefully it'll be a nice relaxed kind of boat neck look. Then I will attach the sleeves and the waistband and I'll have myself a Christmas jumper. At this stage you might know more than me because you might have seen me wearing it already. My next job is to film some more focused tutorials so I think I'll do I'll do a swatch of colour work corner to corner then I'll show you how to attach the ribbing in the join as you go away and I'll show you how to do the ribbing for the cuffs and the waistband which are actually worked separately and then joined once they're finished and then that's it and then I might um I don't know make some other stuff up I may have forgotten to tell you about it here and I'll tell you about it in a bit don't know I don't know can't remember I worked my chart upside down and I hope that doesn't cause confusion but I did it for the sake of laziness. I wanted to get all the colour work done and dusted first before I could just then like whiz the end without having to think about it. That's the only reason I worked it upside down and actually you could argue that I've made life difficult for myself in other areas because if I'd worked it this way up, bloop, 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 and finished in this corner for example I could have then just worked a row of double crochets along the top and started my ribbing without actually having to do any snipping but because I worked it upside down I had to cut the yarn turn it round join the yarn up to this end and so I've made more ends to sew in essentially but I don't mind that too much and it's up to you which way round you want to work it. I don't think it will make very much difference, really. It depends what you find the most confusing. Hopefully, I haven't just added more confusion to the pot. But that's what I did. And then for all the other bits, it makes no difference because uh, it's pretty much reversible. Just choose your neatest side to work with as your right side. And that's it. Um, and here, by the way, is what it looks like on the wrong side some floats so you don't have to keep snipping the main colour because what a faff. Um, yes, I, d I could have floated some of it where I haven't. I just didn't really think about it and snipped before I realised I could float it, for example. Um, and then other places I've remembered and carried it. It's up to you what you do. Um, depends how much you love sewing in ends, I guess. And that's what it looks like. Um, to make these less likely to become loose, I tied the two ends in a knot, which I very rarely do otherwise. But because it's just one block, I figured that actually there may be a high risk of them coming a bit loose. Just make sure you sew in your ends really, really well. And or if you want to tie them in a knot where, where you can. Thing I thought I would mention before I go and I've got my tape measure out because I wanted something that was around 21 22 inches across which is 50 something centimeters around 50 53 centimeters is what I was aiming for but this wasn't my original yarn choice which is and it was marketed as an Aran weight also marked as an Aran weight is this, which is leader of the pack from Hobbycraft. It's exactly the same, 
number of blocks across. Um, this one is 60 centimetres across, 23 and a half inches. They're both sold as Aran weight yarns, but here's the difference between the two. So it's a considerable amount wider. Um, that's what effect different yarns have on a pattern, which is why we talk about gauge quite a lot. I'll provide gauge for it in the, um, in the written blog post. But um, wow, that's an amazing difference. Um, and also, evidence of the fact that I obviously didn't properly check when I made this first version because it's too big for me. I'm going to have to try and get down the carpet in a minute to do some of the bigger um, bits because it's really hard to show you. But this is the top, of this is the body and I've done it so it's right sides facing. So this is the wrong side and I've chosen this as my wrong side because just here is not quite as neat as this side. Hopefully you can see a bit of a difference. Maybe I'm being a little pernickety. Again, I have used stitch markers to um, hold the shoulders in place. This is where I want my shoulder seams to be. It may not be um, big enough. I, I'm going to stitch from here to here, here to here, and then and the same on the other shoulder, and then I'll try it on once everything's together. And then if I need to add additional stitches to bring it in more, then I will. But it's completely optional, and it really doesn't matter too much. But this is um, roughly ten centimeters or four inches, and then all I do is stitch them together with a very simple whip stitch. Um, I'm going to look really awkward doing this because actually I like going from right to left, not left to right, but whatever. Um, and then just picking up a couple of stitches from the tops of each. Work your way along. And then it is nice to pay sort of some more t attention to detail and try it, if you can, um, it's a bit difficult, but you can line up the rib. Um, it, just look every now and again and check you're on the right track, and then hopefully you will be lining them up nicely. If not, you can always undo it and um, sort of re readjust. How's that? See, I'm off already. Um, take your time <laughs> and focus on that and that's all I do so basically I'm just going over and over let me I'm going to unpick that because it's not neat enough for me and I want it to be nicer but basically all you're doing is um, picking up a couple of stitches on one side then the other and then going over the top like that okay so that's all you're doing but if you just spend a little bit more time, then you'll be able to line up the, the rib. But as that stands, oh, no, that's a mess. I'm going to do it again. But do that on both sides, and then I'll show you what to do after that. Here's just a quick look at it. Um, right side, right side fade, right side out. Um, so I've stitched together the shoulders here and here. Not like... <laughs> It's, it's okay. It'll do. So then I'm going to sew the sleeves on open. So I'm just going to twiddle around onto the carpet, I think, because then you'll get a better view of, of how to do it.
find the middle point of the sleeve and join it to the middle here of the shoulder. And then for accuracy, you can count your blocks, match your blocks. That's 11 and 11, three to match the shoulder, three to match the shoulder, and I don't mean shoulder, I mean rib, and then 11 from that point to there. There's 11 here and 11 here. So put stitch markers on, you can put a few more in if you want. Do the same the other side, over there, and then using the same technique, whip stitch all along, all along here and all along the other side as well. Hopefully you can see that I have sewn those sleeves onto the main body. So then all you do is pick it up and fold it over like that. And then you're gonna sew all the way up the side of the body and all the way down the sleeve on both sides. You can use stitch markers to hold it in place if you want as well. And then after that, it's the cuffs and the waistband, and then we're on the home stretch. So this C to C jumper has ribbing for the cuffs and the waistband and across the, the neckline as well. I've used the same ribbing throughout, which is basically making half double stitches or half trebles if you're using UK terms, and you work each stitch into the front third loop of every stitch. If that's gobbledygook, I'm going to show you what I mean right now. Uh, the other thing as well is that I start using the foundation start rather than working into a chain. So let me show you what I mean by that, but it is my favourite easy kind of rib stitch for crochet. This is my cuff band, by the way. So it's nicely fitted. And I'll show you how I'm going to show, sew it onto the jumper as well. But let's just let's just do this ribbing first. So it's the same size hook for each section as well. I don't drop down a hook size for the ribbing. I don't think it's necessary. So I chain three, and then work into the the third chain from hook. One, two, three. I do a little chain and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's how I begin the um, the first row. Then yarn over and into the bottom and chain of the first stitch, I work my next stitch and make an additional chain and then pull through all three loops. So I do this until I reach however many stitches I want. 
and then I get to work into them. I do have a separate video for this which uh, I might link to because I probably talk about it in more detail. Not that I can remember, I did it ages ago. But I think I demonstrate how to do it for three different sorts of stitches. So you do that for however many. For the waistband I think I did it for 11 stitches and the cuffs I did 25 stitches. Let's say we've got enough after this one and then we're working into the top here. That's where our row is. I can't actually see what I'm doing on camera by the way so I hope that this looks like it makes sense. Chain one and then see this is where you would normally work um, your first stitch. Okay, I don't know if you're, I mean, hopefully you're familiar with crochet, so you'll know that that's where you work, normally work a first stitch under those two loops there. For this stitch, it's actually in this front third loop here. And so forth. And that creates a rib because it pushes the two normal ones out to create what looks like a rib. So it's just simple half doubles, half trebles if you're UK, a UK user of terminology, that makes no sense. It, look, it always looks like a bit of a bit of a confusing mess towards the end, but just follow those loops all the way along. This is the next one, just being a bit fiddly. Um, I think I've caught an extra loop there, and I didn't want to. Hang on a sec. And then the last one, and then turn, and then repeat for every row you do the same. So it's those front third loops. And then you just do that for as many as you need. My jumper, I think I did 120 rows for the waistband, which when I worked it all ended up being about four inches less than the circumference of my jumper because I want the waistband to be smaller than the jumper so that it kind of has some shaping, it cinches in a bit. And you, you achieve that by just making it a bit shorter than the jumper itself. Not too short, otherwise it won't fit. So does that make sense? I hope so. So basically you keep doing that. Same as the cuffs, only like 20 rows, not 120. But um, much, much taller. <laughs> There's 25 stitches here. I don't, hopefully... Hopefully you can see that, I can't. Uh, and then this is 11 stitches. So what I've done for the cuff is actually um, sew it together. Um, I think my join is here. I worked it on the wrong side. I'm gonna show you that bit next, but it's, it's almost seamless which is what I like okay so that's one cuff 
I'm actually only that much into my second cuff. I'm going to do it later, that's fine. Okay, so let me just gather everything that I need. I need a needle with an eye that is big enough to fit your yarn through, obviously. Let's join the waistband together. I'm just going to do some faffing to try and make sure I'm the right way round with everything. Hang on a sec. What I like to do with my my cuffs and my waistband is finish on an even number. Then what you have is your um, long working yarn to your right. Now, hmm, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to explain this really clearly. I jolly well hope so. Hang on, I'm just going to get rid of my hair. So, I think this is where I started. <laughs> I think that's the foundation end. Okay, and your tail is to the right, it's going off to the right over here, as is your finished end where you, where you fastened off, okay? So rather than just doing a simple uh, sort of whip stitch together and Bob's your uncle, let's try and be a bit more clever about it so that it is seamless. Let's try and push these, this top of this row forward so that it becomes an extra line of rib on the right side. To do that, thread the needle. So what we want to do is front third loop go in with your needle and then with the the back piece go in through both loops and then that should hopefully create a nice seamless finish so um where do we that one there i think it's this one here to be honest with you you could go through both of those it might well end up being a bit more sturdy if you do don't know what difference it makes. I've not tried it before. Hang on. I'm not going to bother actually. I don't think it'd make a difference. So whatever. Chuck it in. As long as it's in the front third bit somewhere and not in the top two loops. Let's try and get you out of the way. You're making things worse. You're making life difficult, stay out of the way. That's not too bad. That's what we pushed forward with there. So it creates another line of ribbing. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And then um, just sew in that end. Or, or if you're being clever, you could save it and use it as part of your sewing the waistband to your jumper, either or whatever. Right, so waistband is joined. It's not too bad. Then the cuffs you'll have done as well. And now it's time to assemble everything together. Here's one inside out sleeve done. So this is the kind of look you're aiming to achieve. So you've got the, the narrow cuff eased into a much wider sleeve. To make it easier in which to ease it in, there's just one extra step in the process you need to do. I thought it would look better if I added a row of um, single crochet or double crochet if you're in the UK um, just to bring it in a bit more and it does definitely make it easier because I tried it um, without any 
foundation at all. So I attached my yarn and I am still inside out here. Um, oh, so I want to be the right way round. Hang on a sec. Because um, it's neater. The, the, the right side of that foundation is neater when made on the right side. So fold it so it's the right way round and find the join, which is here. And then attach the yarn. And what I did was make two stitches where there are vertical blocks and then one stitch where the, the stitch lay horizontally. I'm running out of yarn now as well, so I'm just using scraps to do all the last minute finishing. So where I have this vertical block so the stitches are vertical, just do two single crochets and then one in the bar of the next, the bar of the horizontal treble stitch. So you do that all the way around and then it brings it in a little bit more and then you can stitch mark the the cuff in or use stitch markers to pin the cuff in place. I've also crocheted over my end as well so that I have to worry about that later. I've gone all the way around so I find my first stitch which is this one here and I'm just going to join the slip stitch. And fasten off and then don't need to worry about that anymore. I'm just going to turn my jumper inside out and then um, pin the cuff on. So I've just turned my jumper inside out, but can you see how it kind of, it has been brought in. It's much narrower now, that space, which will make it easier to, to fit the cuff in, which, by the way, is right side out. This is the right side. Match the um the join with the join seam with the seam and that's where we're going to pin the first cuff but you can see the difference between cuff and sleeve it's massive so using stitch markers to pin it all in place really helps loads which is a terrible sentence but you know what i mean so just pin the two together at the seams and then where they're fold where they're folded in half bring those two together as well and then sort of do the same all around as evenly as possible so if you were to smush it this way for example so get that in the center Fold your cuff like that, and then again where the folds meet, using the stitch markers to pin them together. Where's my stitch markers? There they are. Sorry, it's it's the next day um, after filming some of the other bits of the tutorial, and my my nails are so much worse today. I've obviously been very well. That's that's washing up. And stuff like that. It's ruined my nails. No, I don't have a dishwasher. Okay, so then you're as evenly as possible easing it in everywhere else. I use around that many stitch markers. I mean, you can keep going if you feel it, it'll make it easier for you. Um, so you hopefully can get a good idea of what that should look like. Thanks Kat. I've lost the needle that I was using yesterday, which was, this one's a bit bigger and I'm not, I'm not keen on this little crooked end, don't like it. Anyway, so 
I've got the end of where the sleeve join was. I've got the end from the cuff. So I'm going to use as much of that as possible to sew the cuff to the sleeve. And then I'll probably need additional yarn as well. So it's just a question of catching both loops where there are some on, um, on the pieces and then sewing, sewing around and that's it. Um, catch a couple of loops of yarn where you can and then stitch it all the way around and that, that is how you attach the sleeves and also how you attach the waistband. The waistband is only different in that I didn't add an additional kind of foundation row of those single crochet stitches because it doesn't need it. It's the, the ease in which you have to smush in is not quite as extreme. It was nowhere near as extreme as the cuffs, so you don't need that foundation edge adding. You can just ease it in. And again, kind of just like I, I did it wrong side of the jumper and put the waistband on the inside, pinned it in place, and yeah, stitched it on. I have sewn all the way around. I haven't done my ends very well, but don't care right now. And there you go, so very much the wrong side. So let's turn everything round the right side. Ta -da! That's my seam, and that's the cuff seam somewhere. And that's our sleeves. Let me just show you, to show you the waistband, the easing in is nowhere near as extreme. Um, it just brings it in a little bit. So that's the waistband of my jumper sweater. And it's done. And I hope that has covered everything and is useful and helpful. Um, down below, I have put links to the blog post. I've put a link to Lovecraft's so that you can go straight to the yarn. It is an affiliate link, which means I get at least 5% of the cost of the yarn and it goes straight to me rather than a massive corporation. So if you would like to support me rather than them, or a bit of both really, then follow the affiliate link to buy the yarn. That would be great. Thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten this far, well done. Um, I do like to talk and like subscribe and all that jazz i think that's it um yeah, i guess you could check out my other videos if you wanted to um do what you like let me know how it goes i would love to see any finished jumpers so please you can tag me on instagram i'm uh, zines and roger on insta i'm zines and roger everywhere all right then okay cheers bye bye
like, what?